Hey, Talent Warriors. Welcome to another episode of the Talent War podcast. Today, short topic, but a very critical topic and one I've been focused on for about 25 years, hiring military veterans. Look, we all know there's a talent war going on. But one of the things that we also know, unfortunately so, is highest unemployment statistics tell us that veterans have the hardest time finding employment when they leave uniformed service time. And it's always bothered me. And just to kind of refresh and go all the way back, When I got out of the U.S. military and give it away my age, it was really pre-cell phone. It was pre-internet. There wasn't any LinkedIn. There wasn't Instagram, Facebook. There wasn't anything. It was the look up a company, go to a military hiring conference, use some kind of company to get myself in front of things and really track down people that I knew You know, it was really, really hard. And I remember the difficulty of transitioning. And what drove me nuts was, as I walked out, I had this fear of transitioning. I had this fear of leaving what I knew well, what I had been trained in. And I was around people who were always invested in my success. And that was soldiers who worked for me. Those were my peers. Those were senior officers, senior non-commissioned officers who put so much time and patience into me. And I was leaving what I knew. But one thing that I knew in my gut, my heart, my head, however you want to label it, I knew with certainty that the things that made me successful in the military would make me successful in the corporate world. And so I set about creating the first junior military officer hiring program and no disrespect to non-commissioned officers as I was one very briefly, but I knew I had to start somewhere and I was at a consulting firm and I knew that we really could use the drive, the resilience, the effective intelligence, the problem solving, the emotional intelligence of military officers that had made the decision that four to seven years, it was their time to move on. But there really wasn't a vehicle short of a lot of military placement firms. And I've worked with them and a lot of friends in that industry and in high regard for a number of the people that I've worked with specifically. But I thought, why aren't we doing this for ourselves? So I set out and built a number of veterans hiring programs. And then once LinkedIn came and my career took off and talent acquisition, and I started to get a little bit of a reputation of knowing how to transition, I went on a kind of the speaking engagement. For these career conferences, I'd be asked to speak, answer questions of veterans, answer questions for companies. But I've been doing this for 25 plus years, helping veterans. And I've learned a ton along the way, the good, the bad, the indifferent, as we all do as we go through life. But I can say that some of the problems that I faced back in the early 2000s when starting to build the programs, be that at KPMG and I built the one at Hewlett Packard, they still exist today. And so I wanted to just do a short segment with part one, really addressing companies out there. And then part two, Speaking directly to the veterans with a few tips. As I said, we'll keep it short. But one of the things that was astounding to me, and I will call people out, I think companies have the best of intentions when it comes to hiring veterans. Everybody wants to kind of jump on that bandwagon. But I don't know if they want to jump on that bandwagon because it's a form of diversity. It's kind of the right thing that we should do. And those are good reasons. And anybody that starts a veteran program or reaches out to veterans specifically, good on you. And thank you for taking care of our soldiers, Marines, airmen, sailors. I'm grateful for all that you're doing. 
At Talent Work Group, we truly believe that leadership is the single most vital factor in your company's success. There are many capable leaders, but finding the right one for your company and the role requires you to go beyond identifying a simple, functional, or resume fit. And this is what our executive search will do for you. We will go beyond what you're used to. Experience tells you where you've been, and character tells you where you're going. So instead of looking solely at a candidate's experience and the competitors that they've been at, we'll focus on their leadership traits, the optimal drivers for performance, and the potential for their success to determine who you should select. Because talent can't be seen, but you can assess character. We'll begin by evaluating your organization and identifying the success profile for that particular role. We'll help you design a process that effectively assesses the candidate's character attributes, those attributes that will help the candidate multiply success in your organization. We'll look at the team dynamics. We'll look at what's missing, what's needed, and what's been great before. Finally, once we find the right candidate, it doesn't stop there. We stay in contact with you and the candidate to mentor, coach, and develop, and to ensure success for the candidate and for your company. Yes, we're different. We know what drives performance. We know how to identify potential. You can get started by finding us at talentwargroup.com and let us help you develop your next generation of leaders. Companies out there, as Mike Sorelli and I have often said, the U.S. military is the greatest leadership incubator in the world. And the people coming out of the military are, you know, I used to compare military years to civilian years are like human years to dog years, or I have it the wrong way around. But I felt like my time in the military, I gained 20 to 30 years of experience on my civilian counterparts. And I think companies don't take a hard look and hire veterans for those leadership skills, those attributes such as drive and resiliency, and look at what they can bring to the table. Military veterans, when they come out, there's not a single one of them. You know, my brothers and sisters in arms who have followed the first plan and it went perfectly and everything worked out. We are masters at dealing with change, at dealing with chaos, at dealing with uncertainty or volatility, ambiguity, constantly changing conditions. And now, and I don't even know what we call it. I mean, we've had the pre-pandemic, the pandemic, the post-pandemic. I don't know that we're out of it. I don't know that we're still in it. I don't even know what you classify it as. But I do know that there's a war on talent and or a war for talent. And what really gets me is that there's so much talent available to companies right now that they should be doubling and tripling their efforts to look at all branches of the services. And here's the tips that I would give you. First and foremost, I would take a really, really hard look at the jobs you have out there. And as I've told the TA leaders and HR leaders and executives that I've coached, quit over rotating on specific industry and skill experience and look at what really defines success from an attribute. Hire for character, train skills. Mike and I say that over and over and over. But coming out of the military, take a good look at your jobs and say, you know what? What we really need here is a go-getter. We need somebody with drive, problem-solving skills. We need somebody with some familiarity to this industry. Every industry out there is represented in some form or fashion by one of the branches of the U.S. military. Start going to those job fairs. Start going to those joint bases, those posts, those air bases. Get involved with the military community. Get involved with the transition centers. They go by many different names. But find your way in there and start building a relationship with the bases and stuff that are closest to you. 
start taking a look and working with those military transition centers as to what is exiting the military. And remember, listen, when I entered the military, it was about 17 and a half, 18. Technically, I could have retired at 38. So even the more senior candidates you get, they get 25, 30 years of drive and energy behind them. So take a look at everything from a demographic perspective as to what's leaving those bases and those posts and get involved in the military community. Second, Make sure that you're not just hiring veterans for the sake of hiring veterans, that you're checking a box, you know, on OFCCP or for diversity. Nobody in their right mind wants to be considered for those reasons. They want to be considered for talent. So make sure that you have a recruiter who's dedicated and who understands military profiles and who is a student of your business and can do the matching these people coming out of the military are just students of leadership. They're surrounded in it. They've been living in a leadership fishbowl, regardless of their rank and position. They're experts at taking care of people, building teams, building tribes. And more importantly, now they're so used to dealing with people that are in dispersed locations. So start looking at what's coming out of the military and where they can best fit into your company. Because I'm going to tell you, one of the things that military people are well known for is their loyalty and their stick to itiveness. And everybody is facing retention issues on some level. And so, why not bring in the people that are going to stick and stay longer in your organization, that are really going to invest in it, really want their next mission, they want their next career to be somewhere with some length of time behind it? So, start looking at the military <laughs> folks. Once you have that recruiter, and you have those hiring managers, start small, but also develop a buddy system. Develop an onboarding system that allows veterans to come in. It's a brand new environment, and they're going to adjust as fast as they can, but they've been speaking a different language than those of us in corporate America. Have somebody that's there that's a resource for them that can partner up because the learning curve is absolutely going to be steep for any veteran transitioning to corporate America. But let's not make it tall. The idea is once you make the decision on any talent, veteran or otherwise, that you commit everything to that decision and make them successful. Otherwise, what are you doing? Invest in your talent, especially the military, to onboard them properly, to get them paired up. And then start tracking them and then start using them for referrals. They're the most amazing source of referrals. And it doesn't matter if we're talking professional consulting level or we're talking home construction, commercial construction, oil field work, product work, computer design. I mean, these are the most computer literate veterans coming out of the military these days. And they've had to do all of this and keep those skills fresh in the most austere conditions. The military is pumping them full of education. They're the most educated group of veterans leaving the service in any time in my 55 years. They're accomplished. They have all of these things. Get that recruiter. Get those hiring managers. Find those jobs that they can fill and get a special interviewing process for them. Start small and then start advertising those successes across the business. Start moving those military people around your firm. Absolutely be partnered with the bases and the posts. Do whatever you can to support the veteran community because they've been out there protecting our way of life. They've been protecting the U.S. economy. And so it is great to give back, but let's do it in the right way. Once you start to get some traction Make sure you're creating a program that monitors the results of those veterans and getting them the additional, spread them around the firm, get them additional responsibilities, give them additional challenges once they've been on board for a while, and make sure they have that mentor and coach along the way. I couldn't even tell you the number of veterans I've coached, that I've helped transition, connected, or actually hired. It's in the tens of thousands. And with rare, rare exception, they have a far better average of success 
than their civilian counterparts. Their focus and their drive and their ability to look over the horizon and be patient and deliver even when things get tough is unequaled. So the veteran population from a pure leadership and attributes perspective is absolutely unequaled. And in this time where everybody is fighting for the best talent to overlook veterans and to not build a program that attracts them to your company, that gives them great work, great autonomy, a great next mission, and then provides them a resource group, you're just short-sighted. It takes very little money and very little resources to do it. And the results are absolutely exceptional. Every veterans program that I've either created or had a part in has been wildly successful. It doesn't excuse you. You're going to have to lure veterans to your company because they have more choices than ever, just like most talent. But you can't afford not to have a veterans hiring program. And I do want to say something. A lot of people are going to count veterans as those people who have already transitioned out to one company and are brought into your company. But if I could make a plea or an ask of anybody, it would be to focus as much as you can on those veterans who are immediately transitioning. That's where the lion's share of the work needs to be focused. Bring in those veterans who are Going through the most stressful times is when you decide to leave the thing you know best. Those are the people that need not our help. They just need a shot. They need an opportunity to interview. They need a chance at a next mission to impact this great economy of ours. This episode is sponsored by Talent War Group, a management consulting and executive search firm. We help you attract, retain, and develop your top talent because we know that the most valuable asset within your organization is your talent. With services like leadership development, talent acquisition and HR consulting, executive search, executive coaching, and keynote speeches, we work with you to create talent solutions to your most pressing business problems. You can get started by finding us at talentwargroup.com and let us help you develop your next generation of leaders. Also, if you like what we're doing here at the podcast, please leave a review as it helps us support and continue this podcast. It helps us support people who are really dedicated to improving their business skills and excelling above all else. Shifting over to part two to the veterans out there. As much as I've built these veterans programs and talked to a lot of veterans, don't rely on the fact that you were a veteran, that you're decorated, that you were in Afghanistan, Iraq, Somalia, Yemen, any number of hotspots around the world, Syria. Don't rely on that. You have to come in humble. And the number one thing that I have taught people, taught veterans as they've transitioned, and actually this goes for civilians out there, the number one reason that people fail in interviews is they don't know themselves. They know what's on their resume. They know their objective assets. I got an MBA. I got a Bachelor of Science. I was a master parachutist. I was combat dive qualified, number one from the basic non-commissioned officer course, whatever the title is for their branch of service. They have a list of objective requirements and they only speak to those. But I always, the best advice I've given these people when I've coached is there was a person before you in that role and there's going to be a person in that role after you in every job that you've had in the military. And the duty description is exactly the same. And the accomplishments are generally not far off being similar to the person before you, the person after you. What was it about you that made you different? Have you taken a deep look at yourself and listed the subjective assets that you possess? Those adjectives that describe how you're able to accomplish things where other people could not or get superior results where somebody else could not. You really need to know yourself, and this takes practice. 
And if you don't know yourself and you're just going to the job market and you're going to interview, you're going to struggle and you're going to wonder why it's so hard. Civilian candidates have the same thing. They're like, oh, I'm perfect for this job. My resume says so. Yeah, but you know the words coming out of your mouth did line up with the success factors that that company needed for that role. So absolutely make sure that you know yourself. Second tip that I would give you, which is the hardest question for military people to answer, and it catches everybody by surprise, but it is the root. If you can answer this question correctly, it is the root of being able to answer all other questions successfully. And that is, describe your leadership style for me. Of all of the questions that military people, veterans, should knock out of the park, it would be that one. But the challenge is, is if you don't write it down, if you don't practice it and practice it and practice it, and you know, they say professionals practice until they can't get it wrong. If you're not doing that with your leadership style and being able to describe it, if you're not writing it down and practicing over and over and over again, you are not only wrong, you're just at such a disadvantage. It's not even measurable. And the reason that question is so hard to answer is because most people who've been leading in the military are surrounded by other leaders and their powers of observation, their leadership courses that they've been through from the basic all the way up to the advanced, whether you're enlisted or an officer or warrant, all of those things. Eventually, as you get promoted, as you move up into positions of greater responsibility, nowhere along that path of promotion have you been asked to articulate your leadership style? And civilian firms want to know, how do you lead? How do you motivate? How do you coach? How do you mentor? How do you train? That answer takes practice. <laughs> and as I've talked to countless people, if you've ever had subordinates or you've ever had your kids and they stood in front of you and the longer they talked, the more guilty you knew they were. That's exactly what happens when you get the leadership question wrong. You have to practice it. I've given another example that you may have spent a lot of time firing the M4. Let's say you've been a PowerPoint ranger for the last 10, 12 months, and you haven't spent time at the range putting lead down on targets. You have to practice. You have to get re-familiar with what it is about yourself that makes you a great leader, what you've learned, how you put that into action, how you approach problems, how you approach conflict, how you approach building teams. How do you approach getting people to do some of the most difficult things in the world above and beyond just ordering them to do it? And as veterans, we all know you can't just order somebody to do something. I mean, we can, but they're going to do it just to the letter of the instruction. They're not going to take the initiative. They're not going to be empowered. They're not going to take ownership to go do things. So how did you get results out of the teams that you've led? When you were given the impossible to do, what leadership mindset did you have that walked you step by step through problem solving, leading, coaching, mentoring, collaborating, seeking out data, looking at others? Putting all of that into how you do things all stems from getting the leadership question right. And you need to practice it and practice it. And I say it's like a professor at a university stomping their foot telling you that this is going to be on the test. The leadership question is going to be on the test. It always is. And the number of interviews that I've done when I ask somebody about their leadership style, I know immediately who does and who does not know themselves well. And it is a primary discriminator for somebody like me making hiring decisions. The other thing that I would add that I stress is that the more time you have in the military, the more leadership sometimes becomes muscle memory. And again, you haven't articulated, it just happens. And sometimes you don't or have never been asked to sit down and think about it. But absolutely work on that answer. And from that answer, everything else will be much, much easier to answer in a positive and impactful and relatable way. Another tip that I would share with those veterans who are listening, 
There is one thing that translates from the military to civilian, and that's numbers, data, dollar signs, percentages. Any time that you can quantify something in an accomplishment, be that a bullet on your resume or in an example that you provide as an answer. I was ranked number one out of 25. I saved or brought this mission of logistics in with no safety related incidents one week ahead of time. I was able to reduce our inventory by 25%, whatever. And these are all just off the top of my head. But anytime that you can insert numbers, percentages, dollar signs, and especially the dollar signs of the value of equipment that you've managed, those things translate and people understand those. You know, it's one thing to say, hey, I managed 15 M1 main battle tanks. It's another thing to say, I managed $2.5 billion worth of aircraft maintenance. We all know that those things are important, but how you say it and how you relate that is really, really important. The other thing, and I'm going to go out on the limb because there's going to be a lot of companies to disagree with me, but over all the years, I've been proven right time and time again, and that is the STAR method of answering questions, situation, task, action, result. I've never, ever, ever cared for that for the very simple reason is that when I've briefed senior non-commissioned officers, when I briefed senior officers, and especially flag general officers, and I was asked a question, I would be hanging at the end of a rope, twisting in the wind, a very, very slow death if I tried to answer a general officer with the STAR method. The right method is bottom line up front. Answer the question as directly and as succinctly and with as much impact as you can in the first one to two sentences. After you've done that, then feel free to go into, here's the context. This is the situation I found myself in with regard to resources, be that personnel, budget, equipment. Here's the time factors. Here's the distance. Here's the significance of the mission. If we got it right, if we got it wrong, then build that context. But it's much like looking at many, many resumes when I see lines and lines and lines of crap that people said they were responsible for. I had to search all the way down to the end to find the meat of the answer or the result. How did they do with that? So when you're answering questions, learn bottom line up front. For those of you out there that are married, And you get asked a question by your partner, your spouse, the longer you talk, the worse it's going to be for you. We all know it. You answer the question, bottom line up front, answer directly. The other thing with military people, this is kind of a side note, but it's kind of funny because I've seen it happen so many times is people get into that star method. And halfway through the story, civilian interviewers are going, wow, that was a really cool story. And then It distracts them and they ask you a new question. And if you haven't used bottom line up front, you never answered the original question. Make sure you do bottom line up front and practice it. Additionally, on your resumes, I can't count the number of bullets where I go through three to four lines of I was responsible for moving A, B, C, D, E, F, G to Afghanistan with HIJK of resources. And oh, by the way, I saved $12 million because I reinvented the wheel. Put the $12 million up front. I saved $12 million by reinventing the way that we do logistics. Specifically, it moved 750 people and $2 billion worth of equipment to Afghanistan ahead of time to complete this necessary critical mission. Put things up front. Speak in bullet terms. If you had to answer a spouse, if you had to answer a general, bottom line up front. So just kind of to recap, make sure you know yourself and what makes you different. Know, of course, your objective assets, but those are on your resume and make sure they're quantifiable. Make sure you really, really understand What characteristics, what attributes, the personality traits that have allowed you 
to be successful in motivating, leading, developing, investing in your soldiers, airmen, Marines, and sailors. Practice your leadership style answer. Do not think you're going to get it off the cuff. In the middle of an interview of a job that you really, really want, that pressure is cranked up. So make sure you practice it. You will not sound robotic. You will sound comfortable and you will sound like somebody who knows exactly how they lead and what they do. Always make sure that when you talk about leadership, that you have a tone of humility, of learning, of always learning and giving credit to those people who have put time into you as mentors and coaches. Always make sure that that's in there. Answer things bottom line up front. Easy way to do that. Anything that you put on your resume, put the word how next to the accomplishment. That'll give you your subjective traits. And if you've quantified that bullet, there's your bottom line up front, then get into the how. Fine. Go ahead and use the STAR methodology after that. Last thing that I would share with you, and I've told the story countless times, in all of my jobs as a talent acquisition or HR executive, like most of my peers, almost all of them, our inboxes are filled. Our time There just isn't enough time to do all the things that we're asked to do for the firms that we work for. So if I have time for an interview or I'm making an interview, I'm not going into that interview going, how do I find out what's messed up with this candidate? What's wrong? What doesn't work? That's not what I'm looking for. You need to remember that if I'm taking my time to interview you, as are all the other hiring managers out there, There is no better use of their time than them to find reasons to say yes and to get you to offer and get you on board. In the best circumstances, it's the best use of their time. Oh, my God, I like this person. You know what? They may not have this. They may not have this, but they get the drive. They're going to get things done. They've shown me a track record of how they lead, how they coach, how they're a team player, how they're a team builder. Man, I feel really good about seeing them working with my team. They're looking for reasons to say yes. If there are recruiters out there that are trying to trick you and game you, that tells you all you need to know about that firm. Now, you may get a little pressure and a few hypotheticals, but I wouldn't worry about those. If you know yourself and you know yourself well and you practice, you're going to do fine. 25 years of working with veterans, I look back over my career and I'm incredibly proud of the people I served with, the people that invested time into me, and the things that I was able to do. But I'm a Cold War guy, so I didn't have the global war on terror. And the veterans that I've been seeing over the past 10, 15 years, I'm absolutely humbled by how remarkable and how advanced they are in their leadership skills, their problem-solving skills, especially resiliency. What's coming out of the U.S. military today is some of the absolute best talent that I've ever seen. So if you're a hiring manager company out there, you need to figure out how to do this right. And you need to figure out how to dip into the military community and get some of the best talent that you possibly can. But veterans on the other side, you've got to give them reasons to say yes to you. You have to practice. Like I said, you just don't pick up the M4 and start Sending lead down range. Practice, practice, practice. Professionals practice until they can't get it wrong. Do not think, no matter how slick you are, that you are going to tap dance in an interview. Somebody like me with hundreds of thousands of interviews under the belt, that's about a three-second drill. And I'm going to know it. It doesn't serve your best interest. And it doesn't serve mine either. Hiring veterans is one of the most if not the most rewarding thing I've done in my life. And I am proud to have been able to help so many. And it was only because I wanted them to have it easier than I had it when I transitioned. For me, it was a bear, a lot of hard lessons learned. LinkedIn and other digital and social media tools have certainly leveled the playing field. But the things that haven't changed are firms not putting a full program together. And I would encourage you to do that. Some of the best talent in the world, it always has, always will be. 
And for veterans, you've got to put the work in. If you want to have that successful, impactful career that where you're climbing either the ladder or the climbing wall of corporate America, it starts by doing the work. It starts by knowing yourself and practicing how to articulate what makes you great, what skills and attributes that you have relate to that firm so they know you're going to make an impact. It is a win-win situation when companies get it right and the veterans get it right. And at the end of the day, we've strengthened the leadership fabric of many companies. We've given great careers to people who have sacrificed so much and are now on to their next mission. But it takes two to tango to make it very, very simple. And I'll leave you with this. If you want to learn how to do it better, by all means, call the Talent War Group. We have a ton of experts. I've been doing it for 25 plus years. But we have Josh Johnson. We have Carly Walden. We have Mike Sorelli. We have a lot of people who can help you do this and do this the right way. And it could be simpler and small, or it could be large. And we can do it across the globe. But we're here to help you. And we're here to help veterans. We absolutely believe in making the U.S. economy as strong as we can make it through talent. And there's nothing more rewarding for us than helping and advising our fellow brothers and sisters in arms achieve their next career, a great life for their family, and get them started in the right way. All this to say, veteran hiring has been one of the best parts of my life. And I want to see it continue. So I hope as you download this episode, I hope you listen to it. I hope you figure out how can we do this better. And I hope you get busy doing it. Until then, remember, talent wins. And the only true competitive advantage you can hope to achieve and maintain is your human capital. It's not your product or your service. So get after it. Look into veterans. Veterans get better. I look forward to seeing you out there. Have a great week. And thank you for listening to the Talent War podcast, where we discuss all things talent, focusing on the talent mindset, the core belief that the only true competitive advantage you can hope to achieve and maintain is your talent. Join us for the next episode of the Talent War podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you heard, subscribe and please leave a review. Connect with me on Talent War Group's LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram accounts and send your comments and inquiries to media at talentwargroup.com. The Talent War Podcast is brought to you by the Talent War Group, a management consulting and executive search firm. We work with you bringing services like talent acquisition, leadership development, executive search, executive coaching, seminars, speaking engagements, all to create talent solutions for your most pressing business problems. To get started, visit us at www.talentwargroup.com.